Hey guys, this is uh, Alex. Good to see you guys after uh, hopefully a long and nice winter break here. Um, so this is our first video of uh, 10 and we're going to talk to you guys about budgeting and setting up a schedule now once everything has been designed. So now, since we got everything designed, everything written down on paper, everything kind of specced out and what we're going to build, We need to kind of estimate the amount of time and the amount of money we're going to spend on this project. And now by doing that and how we're going to do it is um, using a spreadsheet and kind of making a rough schedule. And that will better help us show how much time we have, how much cost we have, and you can't just be winging it every, uh, every time you go out there. You have to have a plan of what you're going to spend and how much time you're going to spend on it each activity. But more than likely things are going to change, you know, by setting up a schedule you can kind of say, well if we do this we can, um, we can finish this other activity some other time or if we buy this instead of this, we, you can figure out, you know, where, where that puts your budget because you have this rough estimate. So when you're setting up a schedule for a project, there's a few things that are kind of the necessities, kind of some benchmarks that you should include in your uh, schedule outline. Um, you know, I guess the obvious one, the name of the activity, and then uh, the start of the activity and the end of the activity, right? You gotta know the duration. But a good thing to also include that you should include is the order of which the activities occur. And you can show the movement and show what needs to be done with uh, arrows. Kind of say you have to get this activity done before you can get this activity done. And so it kind of sets up a precedence network. You know, you gotta finish this. You can't finish a bridge without starting a bridge, right? So you have to set up a logical order of, um, of activities, they can be grouped together, you know, you can have some slack, and you know, it's something that you just want to show yourself a kind of visual roadmap of how you're going to finish your project. So uh, when you're setting up a spreadsheet to determine your cost, your total cost of a project, you know, it's kind of impossible to determine how much you're going to spend right off the bat because sometimes something comes up, you need something on the fly, you know, something doesn't work, you really don't know. These are just meant as a quick estimate to give to, you know, maybe a, your teacher, or your boss or something. It's just kind of a quick estimate. So when you're looking at prices of uh, materials and like when you're looking to buy something, there are a lot of things you have to look at. You have to look at, you know, what kind of, is it the top line? Is it worth, like, is it, even though you're spending a lot of money, you're gonna get a lot of quality out of it. You know, you have to do some research, you know, if you're buying a raw material or a product, you know, there's different, you know, raw material, you know, you're kind of getting, um, you know, if you're getting a different kind of steel or anything like along those lines. And another thing you have to look into that a lot of people don't is along the side of the quality, you have to look at how much, like the time that it gets to you, um, you know, shipping is kind of seen as something that you, you don't have to account for, anything like that. But if you're ordering something cheap, you know, a good quality cheap thing, but it might be shipping from China or something somewhere overseas, it's going to get you to you in three weeks or a month or so, and you know, that's putting it behind your whole schedule. So you kind of have to balance all these different things: the quality, the actual cost, you know, the shipping time. You have to balance it all, it's a juggling act. And by setting up a spreadsheet and setting up a schedule, it can help you identify what are the best products to use um, in your project. Mm -hmm. 
So some things you're going to want to watch out for, like when you're setting up this critical path, this uh, schedule, if you will, for your project, is um, you know some good things to watch out for, and you can never really account for are um, you know some things that you don't think are uh, going to take up any time, like documentation or anything that's going under like administrative work. You know the stuff that needs to be get done, but you don't have scheduled. That can set you far behind. It's uh, you know something a lot of people don't think about. Some other things is just you underestimate the how hard something's going to be. Like if you think something's going to take only a month, but then it takes two months, that sets your whole project off the schedule. It's pushing everything back that was supposed to start after that. Um, say something gets broken along the way and it has to be reworked, something along those lines, you have to go back and redo a whole kind of activity, a whole section of your schedule. It's going to set you off the whole entire length of your schedule. And those are only a few. There's a lot more. In the end, uh, setting up a spreadsheet and setting up a schedule at the beginning of your project is really just a rough estimate. I said it before, but this is something just to give you a rough idea of where it's going. Um, so just remember, you know, it's something a lot of people don't pay mind to. They just kind of jump into a project or activity, but make sure to kind of have a plan and a, kind of a spreadsheet how much you're going to spend before doing it. And hopefully these tips will help you as well. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.